In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use HTML viewer to customize what fonts you can use in your Power BI reports. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So if you're a long-term subscriber of the channel, this video will probably be a bit of a deja vu to you because I created a video in the past covering how you can use custom fonts in your Power BI reports. However, in that video, I got a comment about the limitation of that solution, which is a fair comment to make, which is the fact that the font family that I'm using needs to be installed on the client's computer for you to see the actual font on their side. So I was looking for a solution which doesn't require you to install the font in your different machines. And I think I found one and we're going to go through how to set it up today. So we're going to use this report as our demo file for today. What I have here is essentially just an empty report with a measure table. So the measure table just contains two measures that is essentially just it just has some random text in there. You have the title and the body here. Now, if I show it in a card, you will see. And we're just going to use this as our way to show what the fonts will look like, which at the moment is using the default font available to us. So right here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to import the Google fonts, which we can use in our Power BI reports. So you can do that by going into the developer API section of uh, Google. I'll leave a link to this in the description box below. And here is where we will try to get the fonts. So this is what you'll need and plus your API key. So the API key, you will need to generate it by creating and using uh, this button, get a key. So once you get that, you simply copy the code and then you paste it in here at the end and that is pretty much your API key. I've already got my API key and I'm not gonna show it to you, but uh, essentially once you have that, you simply go to your Power BI reports. We go to get data, hit web, and then from the URL, we'll simply paste the, uh, the Google API URL along with the API key that you have just copied. This will give us this result which uh, it's at the moment is a bit of a jargon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this one uh, Google font. And we're just going to keep one thing here, which is the items family, which is the name of the font themselves. So I'm going to hit remove other columns and then I name this one font family. Maybe change the data type to text as well. And then we'll hit close and load. So that's the first bit done. So the next thing that we want to do is to create a measure to check what font family is selected. And I'm going to show you why we need to do this later. But for now, just follow my lead on this one. So first I'm going to say selected font and I'm going to say selected value from the font family. So basically what it does, if I just show it to you in a card, Nothing is selected. If I add this as a filter for this visual, if I choose a value here, it will automatically give us what font is being selected. Pretty easy. The next thing that we need to do is to create a numerical parameter, which will allow us to change the font size of the font that we are using. So in this case, we're going to go to new numeric range. We're going to name this one font size. And we're going to have it as a whole number starting on eight. And let's say maximum is 100 increments of one. Let's say the default is eight. And let's leave add slicer to this page uh, checked to create this slicer that we have. 
So essentially that allows us to create a slider that controls, hopefully controls the font size later, which will hook up to our font once we've set it up. We're gonna name this one as well, selected font size, just to make it easier for us to know which one we are using. So this one is, is something that is generated by the, uh, by the parameter. And uh, we're just gonna reuse that and add it into our calculations measure table like this. Here we are. So the next thing that we need to do is to import a visual called HTML viewer, which is the way is what we will use to customize the elements within our values. So in this case, we want to customize the font family and font size of our text. And using the HTML content visual allows us to modify the contents of our, uh, of our visuals using HTML code. And if you're not familiar with HTML content, I actually covered this, uh, but using a separate thing in a different video. So if you want to know about that, go check that video out. So from here, what we're going to do is change these visuals, the title and the body into HTML viewer content, which as you can see, it will just change the value to uh, an unformatted text. Same as this one, if I change it to HTML content, which is what we want to do and we're gonna add the formatting to it after. The next thing that we want to do then is from the external tools, you need to open tabular editor because we'll need to create a calculation group. Now tabular editor is an external tool that you can install in your Power BI desktop and I highly recommend that you do so because it allows you to modify your models in a lot more ways than is available to you in the UI in Power BI desktop and using tabular editor, for example, is the only way for you to create calculation groups as you can't do it on the front end of Power BI. So here we are in the tabular editor under tables. You will see here are all of the tables that we have created so far, the Google fonts, the calculations measure table, the font size uh, parameter that we've created. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're gonna right click tables, create new, calculation group. We're going to name this one font selector. And we're going to rename create. You will see that it has a column here. By default, it has to have a column. So we're going to name this one just selector. It doesn't matter what you name it. And then under calculation items, you're going to create a new calculation item, which here we're going to just simply name as font family. And then under the expression editor is where you will put the HTML code that you want to use to customize the font of whatever you have selected. Now I've already pre-created the code that we need to use, but to explain to you briefly what happens here. So the return part here is the HTML part of the HTML viewer. This is what will allow you to control what font it uses or what font size it uses or for which text it needs to change the values to. The variables at the top is what you control in your Power BI report to change the values in this HTML code. So for example, the text is what you have selected uh, as a selected measure. The selected font is referencing the fonts that we have selected in our measure that we've created. And selected font size is the measure that was created by the font size parameter that we created earlier as well. So for example, here, it's using the font, the Google API's font to dynamically change what fonts are being used in your report by changing simply the reference to it in the CSS here. So once you're done, you simply need to hit check to accept the changes and then hit save under here to save the changes to your model before you close tabular editor. So now once you close this, Power BI will ask you to refresh your model now because we've made some changes in the calculation groups, which is fine. What you will notice now that it's done is it's created a new table here, font selector, which at the moment, I mean, it won't do anything yet. And 
to prepare for this, let's start to create some values here. So let's change this into a list and let's change this to be able to change and select values, single select. So we can just change one font size. And then what I want to do as well, create a copy of that, is change the font that is being used like this. So we can choose the font family and font size. And at the moment, it's not really doing anything yet, which is fine. So what we need to do is under the, the visuals, the HTML visuals themselves, we need to use the calculation group. So the selector itself, for example, like this, we select the font family, which as you can see, has changed the value or the font family that that visual uses. So we'll do that one for this as well. So we'll use selector, filter on this visual font family. So as you can see, the font family has changed. And as we change the selection here, so does the font type. If we change the font size, you will notice that because we created that calculation group, we're able to dynamically change those values in the calculation group, which affects the font in this page. If you wanted a different font size or a font family for each of these visuals, instead of having a filter on the page level, you can create a filter on a visual level. So for example, we're going to use here font family and font size. We want to use let's say 50. So that is a separate change for that visual. And then for this one, we'll use font size. Let's say 15. And font family on this visual is something else. So this option allows you to dynamically change the font for each of your visuals independently from each other. So the only limitation with this one compared to the previous solution that I showed you before is that because it's using HTML visuals or because we are formatting it using HTML, it can only work in the context of a HTML visual, so a HTML viewer in this instance. So for example, if you want to change the font of your tables or your charts, for example, you will either have to use a different method or you'll have to create your tables or charts in a HTML contact. So this solution is pretty genius and I want to thank NJ Park in LinkedIn for this solution. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to even figure out how this uh, works. So thank you very much. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how you can use HTML viewer to customize the fonts that you use in your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.